Now, would you think, would you consider uh, Alonzo Williams having a club? Because I believe he Godfather. Had, he, he had Eve After Dark. And, I mean, he had a few spots over Alonzo there. Alonzo Williams is godfather of LA hip hop. He's before my time, definitely. <laughs> Everything I did, like, when I, when I, if I hadn't gone away to college for five years, I'd have been more in the mix of what Alonzo was doing. But I didn't start, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he, he set the groundwork. I mean, he did, he was so ahead of his time with having a label and, and the clubs and everything like that. And I mean, like, you know, it shows you how separate LA is too, though. I mean, like, there wasn't much black clubs, like, like later in my era, the black clubs were maybe in Maria Del Rey or Century City or West Hollywood or stuff. There were clubs in the black community, but not much of relevance that were big and important like, like his, you know? So yeah, I mean, we all owe a debt to him if we're involved in hip hop in LA. Oh, most definitely. I mean, he's, he's linked to some of the biggest stars in the history of hip hop coming right out of his little studio, you yeah. know? Yeah. I think a lot of people were, were maybe a little hesitant to deal with Lonzo Williams' clubs because anything could happen at his club. Right. You went to his club, you know, who knows what, what could happen. And maybe people heard about going to that side of town is a little bit more rougher. Um, did you ever hear about stories like that where people say, nah, we're gonna stay on the west side? <laughs> Definitely. I mean, <laughs> LA has a, a reputation of that any black party that starts and is popping like three to four weeks into it, it's, it's gonna get shot up. And sadly, there's kind of a lot of truth to this. And the more in the southern part of the city you are, the more risks you're taking. Also, the less, the more you can get away with that kind of stuff too, and where like the club could at least stay open or something, you know. When, I came into it in an era where what I was doing was, like I said, I was bringing hip hop to Hollywood. We were doing clubs in places like downtown in Hollywood uh, that weren't in the hood and were, and were attracting like mixed crowds. As a promoter, as a street promoter, I was going to all the record stores and swap meets in the hood, Compton, South Central, you know, Gardena, you know, all these neighborhoods, you know what I mean? for record stores and this and that. But, and the DJs that were relevant at clubs and things like that at that time were a little bit more north. There wasn't really much happening south as far as like big clubs. There were clubs and communities and things like that. But that era of like uh, what you said, like people have been scared off of it. You know what I mean? So the black clubs had moved to areas like a Marina Del Rey or some, anywhere they could talk club owners into letting them have their parties until they got too rowdy and they got shut down, which was kind of the like basic situation, you know? So the black party promoters took these parties all over the city. And, you know, the parties that were in downtown were these crazy mixed race things that mostly more white people were throwing that black people would go to because there was hip hop being played there and stuff like that. But there weren't, the black parties weren't on that. The black parties at that time were more on like some dress code. You know, it was like Paradise 24 was the thing and you had to wear these kind of clothes to get in there. And that was the attempt to keep that element out of the parties, which made the opportunity for us to start throwing these parties where it was more hip hop. You could wear tennis shoes, all races are coming. And we're not, you know, we're not on that where the black clubs had kind of become bougie, weren't playing a lot of hip hop. It was about a dress code thing, and that's kind of what I brought to it. The parties that I threw and the things I were involved with were more in downtown, Hollywood, different areas. Some in like mid-city, we might take a place on Washington or Pico or whatever, you know, and, uh, and throw these like mixed kind of parties. Did you ever cross paths with uh, Gregory G-Bone Everett, who was, he was promoting ultra wave dance groups. It was dance slash hip hop, um, comedian Alex Thomas, was a dancer back in the day. Now we're talking about 84, 85, 86. R.I.P. G-Bone, man. Great guy. His ultra rave era was when I was at college, so I kind of missed that. Mm -hmm. But I know him as a filmmaker, a great guy of the culture. I hope that documentary is getting made about, about the ultra wave because I know how important it was even though I never went. 
You know, I was close enough, and I, I know it was at Vets Auditorium on Overland, and you know, you hear people talking about these legendary parties, and I knew a lot of dancers. You know, and like I said, the Far Side were dancers. My barber Kenny uh, Harris was a dancer. You know, uh, 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 my my guy Shane who worked for me, his his buddies were some of Madonna's dancers. You know, what I mean, I was always affiliated with like hip hop dance crews in L.A. and the dancers. So through that, you know what I mean, I I, I knew a lot about this kind of stuff. You know. Yeah, he, he represented more of a, a trendy, the trendy black kids yeah. that kind of went to Hamilton, Palisades, Fairfax. Uni, Fairfax. Yeah. Um, whereas Lonzo Williams was doing his thing on the other side of town, Centennial High, sure. you know, Watts, Compton. Uh, but they were doing their thing kind of like at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the trendy movement was super influential in L.A. You know, you got black people coming up and exposing white people to all this cool shit. And then vice versa, the culture exchange. Because the black guys are coming back with creepers and, and this punk rock stuff and everything that became part of the trendy look. And so it was like there was really this interchange going on between white culture and black culture that was really cool when, when they started to mix. And, and the trendy thing and, and the West L.A., you know, Mansfield areas and things like that. All these people were really affected by that because they were so close to it and everything, you know. And like you said, the kids that went to Fairfax High and went back to their neighborhood and brought these things and stuff. And it was great. You know, there was a lot of cultural exchange going on um, at that time. It was very exciting, you know. Thanks for watching StreetTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Feel free to comment below so you can give us your feedback and be sure to watch the two related episodes to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the links in the description and thanks for watching StreetTV.net.